at first for the division of the Pioneer Panthers. Leading off and playing center field, number 10, Drew McKay. Batting second and catching, number three, Eli Guffey. Batting third and playing first base, number five, Lucas Perry. Batting cleanup and playing third base, number 24, Noah Miller. DHing and batting fifth, number 23, Dawson Eggers. He will be batting for second baseman, number four, Ryan Wicker. Batting six and playing left field, number 11, Brandon Starrett. Batting seventh, seventh and playing shortstop, number nine, Lane Weldy. Batting eight and, and pitching, number 13, Brody Howard. And batting ninth and playing right field, number 17, Tyler Zellers. And now the starting lineup for your Zebras. Leading off and playing second base, number one, Brady Coleman. Batting second and playing shortstop, number five, Carson Pollock. Batting third and playing first base, number three, Tanner Reinhartz. Batting cleanup and catching, number 23, Jake Seifert. Batting fifth and playing third base, number 10, Gavin Young. Batting sixth and playing right field, number seven, Colton Berger. Pitching side for the Zebras will be number 22, Brant Beck. DHing for Brant will be number 24, Brady Beck. Batting eight and playing left field, number two, Drew Bowers. And batting ninth and playing center field, number 11, Parker Casper. Now would you all please rise and remove your caps through the playing of our national anthem. All right, good evening everybody and welcome here from Bob Copeland Field. Tonight's non-conference matchup between the Rochester Zebras and the Pioneer Panthers. Rochester coming in with a 7-3 and three mark. Valley had a really good week coming in uh, starting last Friday with that win against the Academy. Got a big win uh, here last night against Southwood in their first TRC matchup. They're coming in with four in a row, so... Good, uh, good little stretch here for Rochester. Yeah, Southwood really gave. They came in with a one and four record. hadn't been hitting much, and I guess they didn't hit much. But Jaron Kraft of Southwood pitched a heck of a game. Rochester scored five in the bottom of the sixth to win it six to one. But it was closer than a, maybe a six to one score might suggest. Yeah, it was one to one for a long time. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, but Tanner pitched a great game. He only threw eighty pitches through seven innings, and the oh. only run he allowed was unearned, and he walked only one, which is real. That's a real good sign moving yeah. forward. But tonight we're going to see Brant Beck on the mound. Last time Brant pitched was in a JV game against Caston on Saturday at Caston. Three innings, no runs, and six Ks. Yeah. So Brant is, uh, we're going to see how he does against the varsity lineup that's really been hitting the ball. Pioneer has been crushing it of late. Uh, they have won three of their last four games, and during that four-game stretch, they have scored 36 runs, 
Pioneer hitting 298 as a team, and Rochester is hitting 297 as a team. So both teams have been hitting the ball. And, of course, Rochester isn't going to put Reinhardt or Pollock on the mound just in case they might have to face Pioneer in the sectional just as Pioneer won't be sending Braden Erickson to the mound because, in fact, Braden isn't even in the lineup tonight. So yeah, uh, uh, it's going to be kind of a battle to see who's kind of pitching kind of outlasts the other, I think. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if we had a high-scoring game. Yeah, non-conference game, but like you said, these two could match up against each other over in Wabash in uh, just a little over a month in some sectional action. So uh, it's always good to get an opportunity to see another one of the schools that we cover because obviously in the spring we don't get as much coverage of our other schools as we may have in the fall and in the winter. So an opportunity here to uh, get a chance to see the Pioneer Panthers in action here tonight against your Rochester Zebras here on RTC4 and the IHSA Champions Network. And one of the big stories is the, the, the two young freshmen for Pioneer who have really uh, taken on a big role in this team, and Lane Weldy and Brody Howard. Mm -hmm. I mean, Lane is is hitting, uh, you know, 500. He's 6 for 12 on the young year. He's playing some shortstop. And we're going to see Brody Howard on the mound tonight. Uh, Brody has got the job done at bat, at bat as well. He's 4 for 9 on the season. That's a 444 average. So um, these fre it's, it's really kind of a combination of some younger guys and some older guys. Yeah. Kind of, uh, kind of similar to what we see with Rochester. And yeah. Both teams doing really well at the plate. So it'll, it'll be an interesting one here tonight. I, like you said, I think you're going to have to score at least 10 runs probably to get this game. All right, we're ready to go. It'll be Drew McKegg, Eli Guffey, and Lucas Perry due for Pioneer against Brant Beck here in the top of the first. First pitch of the game. McKegg tries to bunt his way on. Beck pounces on it and throws to Tanner Reinerts for the out. And so Reinerts is over at first tonight. Uh, Brady Beck is going to be hitting for his brother tonight. Yeah. So he's uh, DHing. Yeah, the outfield from left to right for Rochester. Drew Bowers is getting a start on the left tonight. Parker Casper in center. Colton Fervid is playing right field tonight. Gavin Young at third. Uh, Carson Pollock at short. Brady Coleman at first. Tanner Reinerts at, fir Tanner Reinerts at first base. Jake Seifer catching and Brant Beck pitching. Pop-up foul. Seifer... Makes the catch. Two up, two down. So Eli Guffey, uh, their sophomore catcher. And Eli had been hitting really well, hitting 368 prior to that pop-up. And that will bring up the junior first baseman, Lucas Perry, another hot hitter. Lucas hitting 438 on the year, 7 for 16. He's got six singles and a double. First pitch by Brant Beck. That's put in play. Is it three pitches? Huh. Coleman the first for the out. A 1-2-3 inning for Brant Beck in the first. No <laughs> runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. End of half an inning, no score between Pioneer and Rochester, and you're watching RTC TV4. Welcome back here, Bob Copeland Field. Val, I tell you what, we talk about you know how both teams are just really hitting the ball and pounding the ball, and it's going to take a bunch of runs to win this game. Brant Beck throws three pitches to get out of the top of the first inning, and uh, here we are moving to the bottom of the second. Yeah. So what do we know, yeah, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. It'll be Brady Coleman, Carson Pollock, and Tanner Reinert due for Rochester here in the bottom of the first against Brody Howard. Uh, Pioneer defensive alignment. In left field, it's Brandon Sturrett. In center field, Drew McKegg. In right field, it's Tyler Zellers. So that's an all-senior outfield. Noah Miller is playing third base tonight. Lane Weldy at short. Ryan Looker is the second baseman. Over at first, that's Lucas Perry, and it'll be Eli Guffey catching um, Brody Howard, sophomore catcher catching a freshman pitcher. One interesting stat, you know, we mentioned the team batting averages are very similar. Pioneer has played six games and struck out 50 times, so about eight a little over eight strikeouts a game. Rochester has played ten games, four more games, and they have struck out 53 times. Oh, wow. Only three more strikeouts, even though they played four more games. Mm -hmm. So Rochester striking only a little over five times a game. You know, this is a, a zebra lineup that makes contact, but they've also hit for some power, too. Rochester with seven home runs as a team. Pioneer has two home runs, and the guy who hit both of the home runs is not in the lineup tonight, Braden Erickson. Mm-hmm. Carson Pollock hit the seventh home run last night, a two-run shot in the bottom of the sixth. They were already up 4-1, to one and they made it 6-1. to one. Brady Coleman had a big RBI double in that sixth inning last night, too. And he's heading the count 2-0 and oh here, freshman facing freshman. Strike one. 
Rochester is seven and three, and Pioneer is three and three. Breaking ball over the inside corner, two and two. Coleman, a 273 hitter, nine hits and 33 at bats. Swing and a miss, but the ball's in the dirt and will go to the backstop, and Coleman will reach base on a strikeout and a wild pitch. Another announcer's jinx. We'll talk about how much Rochester doesn't strike out in the yeah. first batter of the game. But they do get a base runner, and that will bring up the sophomore shortstop, Carson Pollock. Pollock hit that two-run homer, as we mentioned last night. Carson hitting 306 on the year. That was his first homer. He's got 10 RBIs. Reinerts has three homers, one each for Pollock, Fervita, Young, and Cypher. Pitch is high. Lady Zebra softball is in action tonight over at Fansler. They will be taking on John Glenn, another non-conference matchup over there. And that one's probably going to start closer to 5.30, Mr. Rainey said. They've yeah, that was listed as a 5.30 strike call there to Pollock, and it comes one and one. Yeah, Rochester hosting John Glenn tonight at Twin Lakes tomorrow. There goes the runner. Pitch is taken. Throw by Guffey. Safe. Stolen base for Coleman. Again, it'd be curious to see how Coach Hardy's in, I don't know if you want to say a bind, but he'll He's going to have to be judicious in terms of how he uses his pitching just because Rochester, after tonight, they don't play again until Monday when Northfield comes here. Pitch is high. Pioneer, they're at Clinton Central tomorrow. they got a conference doubleheader at LaVille on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's the big difference. Obviously, we've talked about it a lot between the Hoosier North and the TRC. You know, the mm -hmm. Hoosier North, they play... Uh, a double header, basically, usually a home and a home, but in this case with LaVille, it's going to be a double header at LaVille uh, for every conference team. So, mm -hmm. you know, they've got a lot of uh, a lot of conference games. They're only through their first uh, matchup with Winnemac, so they got a lot of conference games to go yet. Two and two to Pollock. Way high. Looks like Howard just early on has a little more command of his curveball, actually, than his fastball. Mm-hmm. Three and two to Pollock. Base on balls. First and second, nobody out. And now they've get, and now Howard has to deal with Tanner Reinerts, who is a four nineteen hitter. He has three homers and he leads the team with eleven RBIs. Strike. Ball pops out of Guffey's glove, but not too far away for the runners to advance. Reinhardt says 11 RBIs, but Pollock, Young, and Cypher all have 10. So I guess we talk about balanced scoring in basketball. We get balanced production in this lineup. 0-1. Mm -hmm. oh one That's what makes it so dangerous because you can't, you, know, you can't pitch around anybody because there's going to be somebody that's coming up next that's uh, just as good and so you you got to try and battle against each one of them. And Breaking ball inside, two and one. It almost looks like Howard's kind of aiming that curveball at the front hip of the right-handed batters. There goes the runner. Throw down. Out. Oh, excellent throw by Guffey. Boy, that was. That was a great one there. Out number one. Caught stealing 2-5. And Pollock holds at first, so it wasn't even a double steal. Mm -hmm. Runner at first with one out. So Rochester takes a gamble with your big slugger at the plate and taking a, a gamble on the bases. The count is 3-1. and one. Fouled off. Tanner had two hits yesterday in addition to his terrific pitching performance. Three and two. Grounder to short. Weldy to second. 
out for a force out. Fielder's choice, 6-4. Good job by Weldy. Looker over there to cover. That'll bring him Jake Cipher. Well, we know Jake, and Jake is certainly has a sense of humor. Jake, after the game against Delphi, he said, Val, you should put a headline in your one of your articles. Cipher decommits from IU Kokomo, comma, should go to Purdue for swimming. <laughs> I said, Jake, why that? He goes, I can't buy a hit right now. Oh. <laughs> I don't think you'd want the uh, IUK coaches reading that because they <laughs> might take it serious and think that uh, they just lost a uh, player for next year. Yeah. No, Jake is just <laughs> – he's just in the sl- – and the funny thing, his slump is hitting 267. Strike two called, one and two. Yeah, a lot of people would uh, consider that a – Pretty good week, but uh, he considers yeah. it a slump. Ten games, ten RBIs. You get an RBI a game. Yeah, he's, he's in a slump. Yeah. <laughs> that one's going to go on the left field line. Just foul, yeah. That would have been a good slump uh, buster there if he was able to get that one down in play. Mm-hmm. Jake hit that home run against uh, Madison. He's got the one homer he did against Madison back in the season opener back on March 30th. One and two. Fly ball, left field, pretty deep, but foul. And at home run distance. Yeah, he's uh, he's hit two of them right there. If he can just uh, square one up a little bit. That was that was close to home run number two for him there. One and two to Cipher. Good curve by Howard. Cipher fights it off and then kind of hangs at one and two. Fouled off. Yesterday in the TRC in baseball, Wabash beat Northfield 5-2. Northfield had been ranked number 10 in Class 1A, and that was kind of an interesting matchup at Chris Root Field. Mm-hmm. But the Apaches got that one and got a nice early head start in the TRC. Got him swinging. Good pitch. Brody Howard. Strikes out two in the first inning. No runs. No hits. No errors, one left. At the end of one inning, no score between Pioneer and Rochester, and you're watching RTC TV4. Welcome back here. Bob Copeland Field, no score between the Panthers and the Zebras after one. Val uh, Rochester had runners at first and second with nobody out, but a great play there by Pioneer as they get the uh, lead runner trying to steal third. They get a fielder's choice to get out number two, and then Cypher uh, uh, strikes out there for the third out. So, um, Pioneer, nice job of kind of recovering there and able to keep the Zebras off of the uh, scoreboard there in that first inning. Rochester at first and second with nobody out and Reinert's up. You would have thought they would have gotten one at least. Uh, right. What a job by Howard to get out of it. And he just seemed to kind of take a deep breath and pitch his way out of it. And he, he didn't try and overthrow. He just kind of calmed down and uh, or stayed calm and really located mm. his, his pitch as well. And it started with a great play there, Guffey with the throw. Yeah, from, Guffey uh, with a great Gu- yeah. Guffey helped him out with a great throw, mm-hmm. and then um, he's changing speeds pretty well so far. He threw a lot of breaking balls to to Cipher and then struck him out in a fastball. It looked like so that's an impressive first inning mm-hmm. for Brody Howard. It'll be Noah Miller, Dawson Eggers, and Brandon Sturette due for Pioneer here in the top of the second. Was really impressed with Noah Miller uh, for the Panthers on the basketball floor, and uh, yeah, must be doing pretty well here for the uh, baseball team as he's uh, batting cleanup. So, just a sophomore, isn't he? 
He's a junior, hitting 182. Yeah, he is 4 for 22 in the season. But he does have three RBIs. Fly ball to left. Caught out there by Bowers. One up, one down. Good contact. Is that, is that four pitches, four, four outs, or was there? No, there was two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let him bring up the junior DH, Dawson Eggers. Eggers is a 300 hitter, three for 10. One RBI. Strike. So I was talking with Colton Fervita about the Beck brothers after the game against Delphi, and they said, he said that they had been begging both of them for years mm -hmm. to come out for baseball. They said they were, they said when they were younger, they were, they were really good. Well, I mean, you you can see it just especially with uh, what Brady's been able to do. Uh, you can see that uh, obviously mm -hmm. there's a lot of talent there, and of course they're just really good athletes anyway. Yeah. Eggers chokes up on the bat. He's down on the count one and two. High. Looks like Brand tried to throw like a changeup or something on 0 and 2, missed low. Then he tried to throw a fastball on 1 and 2, missed high. So let's see where he go goes. What he goes with here. Put in play to left side. Coleman's throw. Got him. Wow. Great throw. Still uh, able to get him after the bobble. Excuse me, there. That, was, that was Pollock. Excuse me, that was Pollock with a great throw. That was actually touched by Young. That's a 5 6 3. But Pollock had basically no time to set himself. He just kind of had to fire it. Yeah, I, I thought after uh, Young kind of uh, got a mid on that and knocked it down that that was uh, definitely going to be a, a runner for Pioneer. And, boy, obviously Carson has a gun. <laughs> Sturette, ground ball left side. Gavin Young will take this one. Throws to first for the out. Another 1-2-3 inning for Brent Beck. For Pioneer in the top of the second. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. At the end of an inning and a half, no score between Pioneer and Rochester. You're watching RTC TV4. Welcome back here, moving into the bottom of the second. Still no score here between the Panthers and the Zebras after an inning and a half. A really good uh, pitcher's duel here so far, Val, with uh, how we talked up the fact that both teams were just, you know, hitting the snot out of the ball. And here the, uh, the pitchers have been doing their thing, and the fielders have been doing their thing, and no score here after an inning and a half. Yeah, uh, and both able to, you know, command their off-speed stuff and get hitters just a little bit off balance. And so it will be Young, Fervida, and Brady Beck due for Rochester here in the bottom of the second. Sun making a little appearance here. Kind of overcast day, but uh, a little sunshine here for a moment. Yeah, I think we're supposed to get some rain right around, what, 10 o'clock tonight? Kind of held off. I was uh, anticipating earlier in the week that we might have uh, cancellations last night, but uh, the rain held off, and baseball and softball got their games in. And yeah. Grounder, left side. In the hole, Weldy. Safe infield single for Gavin Young. That was a heck of an effort by Weldy. Oh, I know. I, I was thinking, man, if he gets him, that is impressive because he was deep in the hole short, but uh, just not able to get that over there in time. And we got one aboard here for Rochester. Colton Fervita, the banner. Ferv playing right field today, hitting 318 on the season. One homer, six RBIs. Low. Whoa, up and in. Rochester has 18 stolen bases as a team in 10 games.
Pioneer has 12 in six games in case you're winning. So both teams about two stolen bases a game. Just outside, 3-0. The Peru baseball team is looking impressive, 16-4 to in six innings over Lewis Cass last night. Mm -hmm. And they look to be uh, definitely one of the, well, figured to be one of the contenders in the TRC. Up and in, that's a four-pitch walk for Fervida. North, yeah. Yeah, North, North Miami, uh, the, again, that's a Peru, just like their basketball team, they're senior-laden, and those kids have played together multiple sports for a long time. Yeah, yeah. I was just kind of wondering, coming off – their basketball season in the league, would they be in kind of baseball? I don't know if they say baseball shape, but in, just <laughs> ready for baseball season. And yeah. I think it's fair to say the answer is yes. Brady Beck swings and, mitches, swings and misses at the first pitch from Howard. Brady is the DH today. He's a 320 hitter, 8 for 25. A nice little change there gets uh, yeah. Brady swinging. Yeah, I'm, I'm just really curious to see, you know, how the, the TRC baseball season goes because, you know, you talked about Northfield being ranked. You talked about Wabash already getting that win over Northfield. Southwood, you know, they've, they've been struggling a little bit getting hits, but, you know, you can't count them out. In the dirt, try to get Brady to offer it another breaking ball in the dirt, but it gets away from Guffey. But that's a wild pitch. And Rochester now with runners at second and third with nobody on. That changes. You bat a little bit for Brady Beck. He's really wants to put it in play now. Let's see how Coach Hardy plays his infield. North Miami got baseball, got a nice win last night. They were trailing Whitco five to two after the second inning came all the way back to win six to five. Okay. And that was at Whitco. So Coach Flores team with a nice win. One and two. Fastball high, two and two. How's McConaughey looking baseball-wise? Uh, they lost last night, I believe. Let me double-check on that one. Got him looking. Slow breaking ball. Strikeout number three. Number Yeah, Manchester beat McConaughey seven to five in baseball last night. Drew Bowers to center. That might drop. It doesn't drop. Nice catch by McKegg. Tagging up and coming in to score the head first dive is Young. Sacrifice fly for Drew Bowers, and Rochester takes a one nothing lead. Kind of surprised McCaig didn't make a play on that. I think he could have uh, at least made it interesting. Uh, he was pretty shallow, and I don't know. This looked like one of those that uh, he might have been able to at least make a play there at home. But also, didn't, you don't want the uh, runner at second to advance, and you have a throwing error or something like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, in. Fervita did hold it second in the play, so runner at second with two outs for Parker Casper. He puts the first pitch in play to short. Weldy. Boy. Nice throw. Got him. That was a great throw. Rochester does get a run in the bottom of the second on one hit. No errors and one left. At the end of one inning, Rochester leads Pioneer one to nothing, and you're watching RTC TV4. Welcome back here, Bob Copeland Field moving into the third. Zebras lead 1-0 after two here against the Pioneer Panthers. They get one run on the board there in the bottom of the second. And uh, you know, Pioneer playing some really good defense. Lane Weldy, uh, impressive uh, freshman there at short for Pioneer. Yeah, he's been busy, but he's made a lot of nice plays, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a great throw there to get out number three on that last play right. with a long Ca way yeah. to go. Casper isn't slow either. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be 7 8 9. Weldy, Howard, and Zeller is due for Pioneer here in the top of the third. Against Brant Beck. Pioneer softball is also in action tonight. They are at Faith Christian. I don't have an update there. Lady Panthers at LaVille tomorrow. LaVille struggling a little bit from what I could tell. 
in softball. And then Pioneer has a three-way doubleheader at home on Saturday against Plymouth and Whiting. Plymouth will be the first game. It'll be Plymouth and Pioneer in the first game, Plymouth and Whiting in the second game, Whiting and Pioneer in the third game. Lady Panthers getting some uh, some love from the uh, 2A coaches poll, moving up to number 10 this yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. So they're getting some recognition oh and there. one oh and one to Weldy, yeah. And it's just uh, uh, Addison Kennel's been hitting really great of late. She's just a freshman. Mm-hmm. Who who isn't hitting on that team right? They're all hitting right now, but I mean it's kind of it's kind of eye open. I, and I and I think you know they had some lot, a lot of young kids who I think just maybe were a little nervous when I saw them play at the start. And I think they're getting a little more comfortable out there. And mm -hmm. you know they had that heartbreaker against Lewis Cass, but they really responded well. Ten, they were up ten to two in the, after the fifth inning and wound up losing. But they've been dominant since ground ball. Speaking of shortstop arms, Pollock throws out Weldy. He said, you've got a good arm, i got a good arm too. Yeah. That will bring up the freshman pitcher, Brody Howard. Howard is a 444 hitter. He's four for nine. You talk about throwing a ball on a rope, Carson Pollock over to first base. I mean, that ball didn't rise an inch. It was, uh, it was straight as an arrow all yeah. the way over. To right field, and that will sneak through for a base hit. That really wasn't a bad pitch. I think, I think he was able to jam him a little bit. But well placed by Howard, and that is Pioneer's first base runner. Tyler Zellers is the batter now. Tyler's a senior. He's the right fielder, and he's hitting 077 on the year, one for 13. Shows bunt, lays it down, foul. Okay, time for our Immaculate Grid trivia. I actually did well today, so. Uh, first category, what's the most popular answer? A's and Rockies. A's. A's and Rockies. Name a player who's played for the A's and the Rockies, who's the most popular answer on Immaculate Grid today. His son just got promoted to the big leagues. His son plays for the Baltimore Orioles. Yeah. First name? This is the dad's first name. Dad? Yeah. Isn't the last name good enough? Okay. Matt Holiday. Rockies and Washington Nationals. But again, the rules of Immaculate Grid. Remember, the Nationals used to be the Montreal Expo, so you can go back to the Montreal Expos if you want. The whole lineage of the franchise. Another foul bun attempt by Zellers. Was that two strikes on the bun? Yeah, he's out. Mm. It's a strikeout. Yeah. Strikeout number one for Brant Beck. You don't see that very often, uh, bunning with two strikes like that. But uh. okay. Don't bring up Drew McKegg. McKegg tried to bun his way on. Back in the first inning, but bunted back to Brant Beck on the first pitch. Strike. Rockies and Nationals. Ro and Nationals franchise. So that in the Expos go back to what, like 1969. They moved to Washington in like 2005. Ground ball fouled that off his, fouled that off his shoulder or his. Even his helmet, maybe? Yeah. Whatever. Regardless, it's 0 2. He's in the Hall of Fame. He had some great years with the Cardinals, too. Most popular answer 32%. Right fielder. 1 and 2 the count. Fouled off. Rockies and Nationals. 
Name a player who's played for both the Rockies and the Nationals. And he's the most, think of the, who's the most popular player in Immaculate Grid today. Right fielder. He's from Canada. If also played for the Cardinals. If you're listening you have Val's uh, cell phone, you can give him a call. We'll take uh, calls mm -hmm. here as well. Or if you need a cell phone, I can uh, I can give you that number here. Popped it. Foul. Is it playable? And near the Pioneer on deck circle, Cypher makes the catch to retire the side. For Pioneer, in the top of the third, no runs, one hit, no errors, one left. They get a one-out single, but Brand Beck gets the next two guys to get out of it. End of two and a half innings. It's Rochester 1, Pioneer 0. You're watching RTC TV 4. Welcome back here, Bob Copeland Field, as we move into the bottom of the third. Still 1-0 Rochester with the lead here over the Pioneer Panthers. Okay, going back to Immaculate Grid, Rockies and Nationals, the number one answer was Larry Walker. Larry Walker was the number one answer. Next category, Colorado Rockies and a player born outside the U.S. 50 states and D.C. Is that about all of them? No. What's, well, I'm asking what the most popular answer is. Oh. Pitcher, right-handed pitcher, hard-throwing pitcher. Had his best years with the Rockies, later pitched for the Orioles and Cleveland. Had kind of a funny first name. Brady Coleman steps up. He struck out but reached on a wild pitch his first time up, so he's 0 for 1. Strike. Pitcher. Rockies player born outside the U.S. 50 states. And excuse me, swing, and he fouled it off, so Howard now ahead in the count 0 and 2. No, uh, no Mr. Screeton up here today. He's kind of your uh, yeah. trivia go-to. Pitched about uh, 10, 15 years ago for the Rockies. Liner to center, base hit. Good hitting by Coleman. That is Rochester's second hit of the game. He kept his hands back on the breaking ball, and so even though he kind of lunged and had him, Howard had him a little off balance, he kept his hands back and was able to Place a line drive it's kind of by a, Weldy. Yeah, it was kind of a swinging bunt almost. Yeah. I mean, no, not a whole lot of follow through on that, but uh, well placed. Carson Pollock is up. Carson walked his first time. First pitch strike. It's one of those when you get down 0 and 2 like that, you just you want to try and make some contact, and he did a good job, and he found a, a gap, and yeah. had a runner on first with no outs. A little more of a hole on the right side because Perry's holding Coleman on. Let's see if Pauling tries to hit the ball to right field. He fouls that one off, so he's just in battle mode now, down 0-2 in the count. Got a got a good cut on that one, but it looked like it was maybe off of the uh, skinny part of the bat there. He does put in play to the right side, and it does find the hole. Coleman's going to try for third. They'll make it easily as Zeller's... We'll just hit the cutoff, man. So Rochester with runners at first and third with nobody out. That was just well placed by Pollock. Again, with Perry having to hold on the runner. Yeah, he didn't really have a play on that because he was. Yeah, uh, if there was nobody on base, Pollock would be back in the dugout. Yeah. Perry would have fielded it and stepped on the bag. But again, again, Howard flirting with danger with Reinerts up with two on and nobody out. So he had two, uh, both of the uh, Zebras at 0-2 and, and not able to get them out. Now we have runners at the corners here for Rochester. I think somebody from Rochester wanted to block, but I think there was a timeout granted. Liner to left, base hit, three straight hits to start the inning. Pollock will turn it second, bobbled momentarily out there by Starrett, but Pollock will hang on at second. RBI single for Reinerts, and Rochester leads two to nothing. 
So first time through the order, Rochester gets one hit. Second time through the order, Rochester's three for three as a team. Mm -hmm. And that will bring up Jake Seifer, and Coach Hardy will head to the mound. Okay, Rocky born outside the U.S., 50 states, and D.C. The number one answer is Ubaldo Jimenez. Mm. Next up, Yankees and A's. Can you name a, the most popular answer of a player played for the Yankees and the A's? Ooh. This was not what I was expecting. The number one answer was not what I was expecting. No, wait, that's not. First baseman. Was it, am I thinking right, was Matt Damon? Or was that Red Sox? I think Johnny Damon. Johnny Damon. Matt Damon. <laughs> Yeah, the, the the actor, you know, yeah. you know a little uh, Jason Bourne there. Was was it was he the uh, Yankees or is that the Red Sox that he went to from uh, the A's? He went from the. He went to the Red Sox, didn't he? He went from the Red Sox to the Yankees, but I think he also played for the A's. Giambi. That's, that's correct, Jason. That's, you got it, Jason. I, I'm Giambi. sitting here thinking because I, I remember from the movie. Uh, I'm yeah. like, wait a minute, who did they? They sold somebody to the Yankees. Yeah. And, yeah. Jason Giambi, number one answer. Yankees and Nationals. And again, this is a current player. In fact, he's currently a Yankee. Yankees, name of somebody who's played for the Yankees and the Nationals. First pitch to Cypher's low and outside. Most popular answer on Immaculate Grid. Played for the played for the Yankees and the Nationals. One and zero. He's gotten off to a red-hot start for the Yankees this year. Juan Soto, that's correct, Jake. Juan Soto is the number one answer. Yankee born outside the U.S. 50 states in D.C. What's the most popular answer in Immaculate Grid? 3-0 the count to Cypher. Let's see if Corey Good gives Jake the green light here. Inside, based on balls, and the runners were going. Wow. On a 3-0 pitch. Bases loaded, nobody up. For Gavin Young. Gavin reached on an infield single, and he scored back in the second. Who was the pitcher for the Yankees that uh, a few years ago? Yep, famous relief pitcher. Pitched well, well into his 40s. That's correct, Mariano uh, Rivera, the all the greatest relief pitcher in the history of baseball. He was born in Panama, I believe. Hmm. A's and a six-plus war season. War stands for wins above replacement. That's kind of a, a new kind of wonky statistical term that kind of measures everything you do to help your team win. A's and a six-war season. Basically, if you get a six, six, wars, six war or more in a season, you're basically like an MVP or an MVP-type candidate. Hmm. Remember the A's go back to they were the Philadelphia A's like a hundred years ago, so they've been around for a while. It's not just Oakland. Well, I'm out since I just learned what war was, so okay. <laughs> I would have no idea who had a good war and who had a okay. bad war. Ground ball to second. Throws to first. Out, but a run scores. Paul, so... Uh, that was uh, Looker, just took the easy out. It's an RBI ground out for Young. Three to nothing now. Reinert's now at third, Cypher at second as Pollock scores on the play. Fervida walked his first time up. Fly ball, will it be deep enough? McKegg catches. Here comes the runner. Good throw is a chance. It's cut off. Throw to the plate. Tagged for a double play. 8-3-2. And that retires the side. Rochester scores two runs in the inning. Three hits. No errors and one left at the end of three innings. Rochester 3 and Pioneer 0. And you're watching RTC TV 4. Welcome back here, Bob Copeland Field. Let's take another quick look here at the play that ended the bottom of the third, the double play off of the catch in center by Drew McKaig and the tag out at home. Rochester does get two runs across in the inning, now leading at 3-0 after three here against the Pioneer Panthers. Now 
Yeah, uh, Reiner's, he looked like he stopped, and he just needed to keep running. Mm -hmm. Um, And try and just uh, stopping isn't going to get you anywhere. Going to get you there faster. Try and maybe slide around the tag. Perry cut the ball off. At least make Perry throw the make Perry throw the ball to the plate. I mm. think you just have to at that point. First pitch to Guffey is fouled off. Guffey fouled to the catcher his first time. Yeah, A's and six war season. Number one answer, Ricky Henderson. Mm. That makes sense. Nationals and six war season. Trout. He doesn't play no. Uh he currently plays for the Phillies. But he, he won an MVP award for the Nationals about 2015. Hmm. Currently plays first base for the Phillies. Jake. It had a, just a tremendous season back in 2015 for the Nationals. One and one. Has a beard. Was on the cover of Sports Illustrated when he was like 16. Was kind of the next big phenom, and he's basically lived up to the hype. Oh, Harper. Yep, Bryce Harper. I got the I got the Harper Trout thing. I, yeah. they, they were always kind of one and the other for me back. Guffy ahead in the count now, two and one. Six war season, born outside the U.S. fifty states in D.C. So basically, a star player who had a really great year who was born outside the United States. What's the most popular answer in Immaculate Grid? Two and one, the count. Line drive to right center field. That'll drop for a base hit. Guffey aboard. We talked about Rochester's hitters maybe make the, the, the adjustment the second time through. Let's see what Pioneer's hitters do now the second time through. Guffey is on, and that will bring up Lucas Perry, who grounded to second his first time up. And let's <laughs> see. Will, will Guffey run for himself here, or will he bring in a courtesy runner? Take a run for himself. Eli is a good athlete. I not your typical, yeah, lumbering runner, lumbering for the catcher. catcher yeah. yeah, not not saying Rochester has one of those either, but you know you see that a few places. Yeah. Pitch is a strike. Six war season by a player born outside the U.S. fifty states in D.C. The number one answer. I won't tell you what it is, but I'll give you a hint. Pirates right fielder. who is deceased. Jake got it. Roberto Clemente was the number one answer. Mm. It's great that people still, re- you know, this is kind of biased toward obviously recent players, so it's great that fans still remember who Roberto Clemente is. Mm-hmm. Of course, he was from uh, Panama. I believe, or was he from? Or was he from? The, no, he was from Puerto Rico. I was going to say Dominican, but Puerto yeah. Rico. Foul ball. And, uh, and he was, yeah, he obviously died in a plane crash. He was d- they were loading up a plane, delivering uh, services for or relief supplies for people who suffered in, in, in an earthquake in Nicaragua. Great biography of him by David Marinus, if you ever want to read that. So, yeah, those are the nine the pop- most popular answers. A 6.8 was the average score today. So uh, my answers... I got. I went nine for nine for Rockies and A's. I picked Mike Harkey, the former Cub far, pr- pitching prospect who never really panned out and then kind of bounced around from team to team at the end of his career in the late 80s. Mike Harkey, one-two pitch. Rounder right side. Reinerts steps on the bag and advancing to second is Guffey. Rockies and Nationals, I picked the second baseman, Mike Lansing. Uh, was a good player for the Expos and then played toward the, the Rockies toward the end of his career. Rockies and player born outside the U.S. 50 states in D.C. I picked Antonio Senzatella. Oh, yeah, that's that's a common one. I think everybody probably had that right on the tip <laughs> of their tongue. I remember the Cubs were playing the Rockies and Len Casper, this was about 10 years ago, Len Casper was talking about Senzatella and he's he said he was from the same town in Venezuela that 
Felix Hernandez was from, of course, Felix was King Felix, and they named Antonio the Prince. <laughs> so that just kind of stuck in my head, and I don't know how I remember that. Yankees and A's, I picked Gene Nelson, the famous kind of setup reliever for Dennis Eckersley, but he also pitched for the Yankees earlier in his career. One and two. Um, that was point two. That was point oh two percent. So again, I'm I'm the nerd there. Yankees and Nationals. I picked the guy who played for the Cubs for many years, a catcher, kind of a O2 pitch in the dirt, wild pitch, and now Pioneer is a runner, a third with one out. Scuffy advances. So that changes Miller's at bat here. Now he, he can he can drive in a run with a fly ball and. In fact, I'm guessing the Zebras will probably play the infield back if he just puts a ground ball in play here. Probably drive in the run. One and two. Fly ball to center. That's going to be a tough play. That's going to drop for a base hit. Casper retrieves it. But Guffey scores and an RBI single by Noah Miller, 3-1. to one. Well, that's what you want out of your four spot, right? Clean up the bases, and he did that there. Miller gets uh, Pioneer on the board. And I think when we go through and have our chamber uh, trivia night this year, Val, you're, you're required to, uh, <laughs> okay. to come and uh -oh. be on the RTC team now. Uh, not even it's not even an ask it's just pretty much a you're going to be there we'll let you know the day and the time okay yankees and nationals i'm going back to a guy who played for the expos played for the yankees he was a catcher for the cubs barry foot f-o-o-t-e barry foot uh that was 0.2 percent yankees and player born outside the u.s 50 states i don't know how i remember this guy he was a right right-handed relief pitcher with a funky name Played mostly with the Pirates, but he did pitch some for the Yankees. That would be Cecilio Guante. <laughs> that was 0.1%. I'm sorry. I'm really revealing myself here. Oh, and two, the count to uh, Eggers. You're, you're getting right answers, but not the ones that anybody else is picking. Right, <laughs> right. Uh, A's and six war season. I picked the Hall of Famer, Lefty Grove, the great left-handed pitcher. He's right there with Sandy Koufax, among the great left-handed pitchers of all time. That was only 1%. That was really surprising. Has anybody from the app ever contacted you and, and asked you uh, where you come up with these answers? <laughs> like, okay, they're the right answers, but, like, you're the only one in the whole country that picked that. Steve, that's my dream. Yeah. Got them looking. Two down. Two down, Jake. So I thought that was three outs, I think. Mm. Just hopped out of his crouch. Nope. Braden stare at the batter. He grounded a third his first time up. 3-1 Rochester here at top of the fourth. I think he's got swim practice coming up. In the dirt. Six war season and Washington Nationals. I went back to an old Montreal Expo. Steve Rogers, really good pitcher for the Expos back in the early 80s. Win 19 games for the Expos in 1982. I think he might have started the All-Star game that year. And then six war season by a player born outside the fifty states. What was the what was the percentage on that last one? Steve Rogers was one percent. Ah, yeah. it wasn't at least it wasn't a point one percent. Yeah. This was my highest percentage of the day, at two percent. <laughs> six war season by a player born outside the U.S. fifty states. I picked I picked Juan Marichal, Juan Marichal, the great pitcher for the Giants. Did you get in the double digits? I got a six today, total. What was the percent on the one Marichal? Two. Two percent? Yeah, that was my so highest one. <laughs> that was your highest one. Oh, Val. Three and one. Juan Marichal, a Hall of Famer, a ten-time All-Star. Fly ball to center. Casper, well-positioned. Calls it in, and that retires the side. Pioneer does score one run on two hits. No errors, one left. End of three and a half. It's Rochester three and Pioneer one, and you're watching RTC TV four. Welcome back here. Bob Copeland Field moving into the bottom of the fourth. Panthers able to get a run across. Inch closer here, three to one after three and a half. 
here with the Panthers and the Zebras. That looked like the, the Panthers getting a little more comfortable at the plate that second time through there, able to get uh, get pretty good contact there a few times in that inning. Yeah, and um, again, uh, Brant Beck has done a good job. He, he can mix speeds. He's not trying to throw the ball by people. And I'm kind of wondering if that's he's something, learned something kind of from previous experience. And he, his ability to command his off-speed stuff is really good. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, here we are. He's gone through four innings, and he hasn't walked anybody. Nice. For a guy with not a lot of mound experience, that's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. And in that JV outing against Caston the other day, three innings, no walks in that game, too. So he's throwing strikes. Yeah. I mean, he's pretty polished, I guess you'd say. Yeah, I mean, let your let your fielders do their jobs and, and uh, you know, don't throw anything crazy that's going to just get over the meat of the plate. But, uh you know, a little bit of uh, contact isn't a terrible thing. It keeps the, uh, you know, the defenders behind you kind of engaged in the game as well. So, Okay, one freshman off the mound, one freshman on the mound. Lane Weldy takes over on the hill. Lane has a 1-0 record and a 1.75 ERA in four innings this year. Four innings, one run allowed. He's ahead in the count 0-1 to Brady Beck. Brady will be followed by Drew Bowers and Parker Casper. We've already seen what kind of an arm he's got, so, uh, you know, he's got a, a strong arm. Yeah. Fall off. And then Howard moves from pitcher to shortstop, so I think that's the only change. Well, Looker, uh, let's see, Perry's still at first, Looker's still at second, Miller's still at third. Guffey's still behind the plate. Looping liner to the left. It'll drop for a base hit. Good hitting there by uh, Brady. Able to uh, wait on that. Uh, look like a little bit of an off-speed pitch and sends that out in the left. Lead-off man is yeah. born. Let's see if Brady will run for himself here. Drew Bowers, the batter. Drew... Uh, hit a sacrifice fly back in the second inning. Gets away a little bit from Guffey, but not far enough for back to advance. Kenny, okay, updates on how the softball is doing? Ooh, that was tight. In the dirt, and that gets away. Brady will take a turn, but he'll stop there. I'm going to call that a wild pitcher stolen base. I think Brady was running on that, right? He was, but does he get there? I don't know. Strike two call, two and two. Rochester softball leads John Glenn three to two, top of the second. A little bit later start over there. I think that was a 5.30 first pitch. Yep. Two RBIs for Braylon Hunter and an RBI for Bria Rensberger so far. Mia Hada shell in the circle. Pioneer softball still looking for an update for their game with Faith Christian. Two and two. Uh, it's just a very impressive uh, home run there last night by Aubrey Wilson. I mean, into the wind. She drove that yeah. thing way out. and Her first uh, varsity home run, and I think that's uh, the first of uh, a s several. Yeah. I think she's going to have a few more of those before her career is over. Good pitch by Weldy, kind of a backdoor breaking ball. I think Drew thought that was going to go outside, and it curved over the outside corner. One down in the inning, and that was, you know, again, Drew's job. Once once Brady Beck advanced to second, Drew's job was to advance the runner, but that was just a nice pitch by Weldy, and that'll bring up Parker Casper. 
You know, with Drew McKegg graduating, I think with Coach McKegg and his boys' basketball team, I mean, Brody Howard and Lane Weld are going to play some big roles in the basketball court next winter as well, I think. Mm -hmm. Popped up. Weldy makes the call. Perry makes the call. They both make the call. They drop the ball. Well, it went off Perry's gloves. So we're going to call that an E3. I think sometimes when multiple players call for it, sometimes the catcher's got to, sometimes they tell the catcher, you know, you've got to decide. You know, you tell who to catch it. But mm -hmm. that shouldn't have happened. And now runners at first and second with one out. And now the, now the lineup turns over with Brady Coleman. Coleman is one for two. He has struck out but reached on a wild pitch in the first inning. Singled and scored back in the third. High. 2-0. And, oh. and again, sometimes that happens in high school baseball just because pitchers catch pop-ups in high school baseball. Mm -hmm. I, I always think, you know, in my mind, you give deference to the one that's coming in towards the ball yeah. versus the one that's going out, going kind of backwards. But, uh, yeah, just... Uh, Right, again, they're both calling for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're both there, but. Base on balls, they're loaded. Yeah, so an opportunity to get an out, and then you get a walk, and now the bases are loaded with one out here for the Zebras. And yeah, boy, you're, coming into up, the, yeah. you're into the meat of uh, some big bats here for Rochester. Carson Pollock is one for one. He's walked and singled. And he has scored a run. Strike. And another thing about Carson, there's really no way to pitch him. He can hit the ball hard to just about anywhere on the field. Oh, and two. That was a good pitch. We can see Wes Steininger. Wes is pinch running for Parker Casper at second base. Wes got into the game yesterday and scored as a pinch runner. Wes, a senior, came out for baseball this year after a long absence. He's been playing mostly JB and made his first, I think yesterday was his first varsity appearance. Let's see here if uh, Weldy can get This is a big one here, 0-2, and, and you need this out. Timeout, Guffey wants to talk to Weldy. If they had... Uh, that was Guffey who called the timeout, I think. Maybe not quite uh, on the same page with what pitch they're looking for here. Tippecanoe Valley baseball in action today at Northwood, and they are 0-0 in the bottom of the third. Probably trying to get back on the right track after they lost four in a row. Oh, nice job by Guffey to knock that one down. Valley has lost four in a row, but the four losses were at Warsaw, John Glenn, Kankakee Valley, and Bremen. Hmm. I mean, that's a tough, yeah. that's a tough slate, especially for kind of a youngish pitching staff. Mm -hmm. One and zero. Oh. Round ball to third. Miller. He'll step on the bag. He'll throw to home. Safe. Had to tag him once he stepped on the bag. So Steininger's out. Rochester now leads 4-1. to one. RBI fielder's choice grounder. Or Carson okay. Pollock. I mean, kind of in the backwards order there, I think you go home first and then try to go back to third, don't you? Yeah. Make the force at home. Either that or either that or go home first and try to go to first. Right. I think he was too, he was too far off the bag to get third and then to get home. Yeah. Plus, by getting third, then you make that, like you said, it, then you have to get the tag. And But uh, I guess the out is, is, you know, important as well. So you did get that one out. First and second with two outs. Reinert's ground ball to third. And this time we'll throw to first. And it's in time. He could just step down third. <laughs> right. It would have been a lot easier. But nice throw by Miller. 
And all worked out for Rochester in the bottom of the fourth inning. They scored one on one hit, one error that was pretty big, and then two, air, uh, two men left on base. Into four innings, Rochester four, Pioneer one, and you're watching RTC TV four. Welcome back here moving into the fifth. Rochester leads 4-1 after four. Val, if you're Pioneer, you got to feel pretty good there about the way that uh, bottom of the fourth ended. Bases loaded, one out. Tanner Reinert's at the plate. They do get one across, but just one across. I mean, boy, of right. all things, that, that could have been a lot worse for Pioneer. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it could. Rochester had a chance to kind of break it open, so to speak, but didn't. And, again, Weldy able to get two dangerous hitters in Pollock and Reiners to hit the ball on the ground. Mm -hmm. So Casper is the new Rochester pitcher. And I think kind of wondering if maybe Corey Good pinch ran for him so he can get a few warm-up pitches. Ah, that makes sense. Yeah, because I was questioning, I was like, okay, did he, like, Say something and make Coach Good mad? Why is he subbing him out right there? And that, that makes a lot of sense. Mm. Wanted to get him a, a little opportunity because he had yeah, probably had it in mind he was going to put him in and give him a little time on the mound. It would be Weldy, Howard, and Zellers, 7, 8, 9 in the Pioneer order due here in the top of the fifth. Who is playing center field then? Fly ball on the right field line that lands just foul. Just sliced foul at the end. Okay, if Fervor is in center field, then who's in right field? Is that the deck? Is that Brant in right? Count as one and one. Oh, Popped up. Yeah, Coleman makes the catch. Beck's back in right, I think, isn't he? Yeah, that yeah, I just saw that. So Yeah, Fervor in center, back mm. in right. Andrew Bauer still in left. Brody Howard's the batter. Brody started the game on the mound, is now playing shortstop. He's one for one. In a busy upcoming, busy schedule coming up for Pioneer. At Oh. Again, this, and again, this is a makeup of a rainout. Yeah, it was supposed to be the home opener last Thursday. Right. So Pioneer at Clinton Central tomorrow, at LaVille for a doubleheader on Saturday. All that got Cypher in the mask. One and two the count. Or did they get the, did they get the umpire in the mask, I think? Everybody's okay, thankfully. Yeah, I think he's giving the old walk the, the ball back out there, make sure everything's... Yeah. <laughs> Did he just do the fingers? Jake asking him, how many fingers am I holding up? That is that is a Jake thing. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, Jake. Jake hey, he, just Jake. Wanted to, he just wanted to make sure he was okay. Grounder, right side. Nice hop for Coleman, and he throws to Reinerts for the out. I was wondering how that second hop was going to be, and it uh, worked out perfect there. <laughs> oh, Jake, I tell you. I'm going to miss him when he, when he <laughs> graduates. We're going to have to go down and cover IUK uh, baseball or maybe yeah. Purdue swimming. I don't know how, yeah. how that's working <laughs> out. But. Now Tyler, Zellers. Tyler Zellers is the batter he struck out his first time. And Casper gets ahead in the count on one. I was talking with some of the coaches about Parker Casper, and the word unfazed yeah. came to mind. 
He's just a freshman. I like his pitching motion. There's maybe a little bit of a deception to it. Mm -hmm. He's ahead on the count here, 0-2. Looks, like he, looks like he's got a little bit, uh, you can see there, he kind of dug back a little bit more than he did on that uh, first one. So a little different arm motion. Fly ball to left center, hit pretty well. He'll drop. drop for a base hit. Flag down by Fervida, but that is a double for Tyler Zellers. Zellers uh, moves well on the bases, so he was able to yeah. get over there in a hurry. Tyler's at, Tyler had a good year in the football field. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's a good running back. That'll bring up Drew McCagg. McCagg has grounded the pitcher on a bunt attempt and fouled to the catcher, 0 for 2. Pioneer with their fourth hit. Their first extra base hit. Want to know the count? Popped up. Foul. Can Cypher get there? Up nope, runs out of room. One and one. Sounds like he would have had, a, had to get a ladder on the uh, roof of the press box to get that one. Mm -hmm. One and one. Coleman kind of holding Zellers close. Now retreats back to second base, swing and a miss. Boy, that was a nice pitch. Yeah, had a lot of late movement on it. Mm -hmm. Looked like it was going right down the pipe, and I think Drew thought it was too, and it was out of reach by the time it reached him. Low and outside. Final number for Drew is 1,136. 1,136 career points in basketball for Drew. Yeah. Scored his 1,000th at Caston. Ball three. Big one here, full count with two outs. Got him looking. We nailed that outside corner with a breaking ball. Strikeout number one for Casper. For Pioneer in the top of the fifth. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. End of four and a half. Rochester leads Pioneer four to one, and you're watching RTC TV four. Welcome back here. Moving into the bottom of the fifth, the Zebras lead four to one after four and a half here at Bob Copeland Field. Nice night for baseball, Val. No rain, just a little overcast here. Did see the sun yeah. for a, a moment there, and uh, Zebras doing pretty good. Um, yeah, just saw the Cubs game against the, the Miami Marlins was rained out for tonight, so guess we got a good weather somewhere. Is that up in Chicago? Or yeah, yeah, up in Chicago. Yeah, play a split double header on Saturday. I do want to remind everyone that uh, might be watching here tonight, Saturday night. Obviously, the Rochester High School prom is going to be taking place. We'll be down there at 6 p.m. starting uh, with the uh, live red carpet as the uh, kids come into the uh, to the prom. Uh, really looking forward to this one. The uh, event facility there at Bel Air and Kokomo is beautiful. And I think our setup is going to be pretty unique as far as our red carpets over the years have gone. This is going to be a pretty unique setup, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Strike call the count is one and one to Jake Cypher. He'll be followed by Gavin Young and Colton Fervita. Cypher is 0 for 1. He has struck out and walked. Weldy's well, he, well, pitch, he's well, starting his second inning work. Of course, you won't be seeing me on camera on Saturday. I'm going to be strictly behind the camera, Mr. and Mrs. Atkinson doing the MC work as they have for the last few years. And I think they enjoy it, and, I, and we really enjoy having them do it mm -hmm. because they they know all the kids. Yeah. And they can uh, make it pretty personal as each one comes through. So looking forward to that. We'll have it on 
Channel 4 will have it on uh, the web as well, and I'm, I'm going to try and do a uh, YouTube and, and Facebook as well, possibly. I haven't done live on YouTube and Facebook for a while, so hopefully that will work. We'll, we'll definitely have it on our RTC4 website and Channel 4 in uh, Rochester as well. For Weldy, that's the second walk. That is the fifth walk by Pioneer Pitching in this game, and now Gavin Young will bat with the runner at first and nobody out. You know, a lot of teams with their number five hitter up at the plate here might think about bunting, but Gavin's just too, think too good of a hitter. I think you want him swinging away here, especially with a three-run lead. Caleb Lutz is in the game as a courtesy runner, and he was on the move there, but the pitch is fouled off, so the count is one and one. One and two. Boy, well, Gavin really wanted that one. Had a good rip at it. Mm -hmm. Gavin, a 267 hitter coming into today's game. One for two so far. And as we mentioned, 10 RBIs. Throw back to first. Lutes back. Two and two, the count to Young. Three of Young's eight hits have gone for extra bases. He's got two doubles and a homer. Rochester still looking for their first triple of the season. They've got 25 extra base hits, 18 doubles, and the seven homers I think you mentioned earlier. Hmm. Rounder, Miller, throw to second. Ball is dropped. Everybody's safe. Call that a fielder's choice and an E4. Looked like maybe a little bit late on that rotation over from the second baseman for the Panthers. Yeah, he was playing over toward the hole a little bit, so he had a long way to go. Mm -hmm. Still, the throw was fine. First pitch to Fervita is a strike, but he's... he's I mean, I get it. He's trying to locate the bag and catch the ball in mm -hmm. all in one step. It's not easy. Liner to left, base hit. Coach Himes with the wave. Lutz trying to score. The throw is, well, Miller was there, but then he dropped the cutoff throw. Lutz scores. RBI single for Fervita. 5-1 to one, Rochester. I think even if he had caught the cutoff throw cleanly, that Lutz would have scored anyway. Mm-hmm. Moving up to second on the play is Young. Scoring from second, Lutz. Ferverda now on at first with an RBI single. He is one for three on the day. That will bring up the DH, Brady Beck. Brady is one for two with a run score. <laughs> Coach Himes does the limbo. Oh, one hit his way. Jeff Himes uh, has been taking over as third base coach this year. I, I haven't asked Coach Good why that why that is, but he's I know he's been on the staff for quite a few years for Coach Good. He's strike call, throw down a third, safe, double steal. The count is now 0 and 2 on Brady Beck, but again now you got a second and third, nobody out, so. Let's see what Pioneer does with the infield. Looks like they're going to play back and trade a run for an out here. Got him swinging. <laughs> I guess that was a swing, right? <laughs> that was a swing. Yeah. Strike at number two for Weldy. That'll bring up Drew Bowers. Classmates over there having a little fun with that one, Jake and uh, Brady. Popped up. Howard makes the catch. Throw to the plate, but the runners were just bluffing. That was the second out of the inning. We'll bring up the pitcher, Parker Casper. So Weldy 
one out away from escaping this jam. It's a really big jam. First pitch is inside. Casper has grounded to short, and he has reached on an error. Strike. Number one. Good curveball. Oh, it was like a sweeper. Casper's got a scratch and claw now in the batter's box. One and two to count. He puts it in play to shallow left. Howard makes the catch. Great play coming out from the shortstop position to make that play. Yeah, the left fielder, I don't think Starrett would have had it. Howard had to make the play, and he did. So a good job. They had Rochester had to run in and second and third with nobody out, but they only get the one. On one hit, one error, two left. End of five innings, Rochester five, Pioneer one, and you're watching RTC TV4. Welcome back here, moving into the top of the six. Rochester leads five to one, but Val, again, here in the bottom of the fifth, as in the bottom of the fourth, it looked like Rochester had an opportunity there to kind of break things open, and Pioneer able to do what they needed to do, only got one run across, did the Zebras there in the bottom of the fifth, and it's a it's still a four-run game here, so... Still within striking distance are the uh, Pioneer Panthers. And Weldy just keeps mixing his pitches up. I think he's hard to get a read on. I mean, he, mm -hmm. he throws some breaking balls to Brady Beck, then he strikes him up on a, on a fastball up and in. And then he throws uh, – he's just – you know, again, he's doing a nice job messing up the timing of Rochester's hitters. And they can't quite square him up, though obviously Fervido was on his base hit. Mm -hmm. So it's 5-1, to one, but – you know, the Pioneer pitching, you know, two two young kids, two freshmen that have yeah. been pitching here tonight for Pioneer. I think they've done an a, uh, outstanding job. And, you know, their defense has played well. They've, he's gotten some help from uh, from his defense as well. Yeah, two errors for Pioneer tonight. And Coach Hardy was talking with the home plate umpire. And Pioneer with their two, three, and four hitters do this inning, Guffey, Perry, and Miller. Guffey is up at the plate, and Perry is in the on-deck circle, so what would he be? Or is he asking questions about Rochester's lineup card? Softball update, John Glenn has scored eight runs in the top of the third inning, and they now lead Rochester 10-3. to three. Mm. Eight runs, and they're still batting. Mm. Casper's first pitch to Guffey is outside for a ball. Eli Guffey has fouled to the catcher, and he has singled, and he scored Pioneer's lone run back in the fourth inning. One and one. Ball low. Foul ball. Two and two. I want to congratulate Noah Riffle from Rochester, signed with Grace College yesterday for golf. Ground ball, third base, bobbled momentarily. And they just do get him. Duffy grounds to third to lead off the sixth. Good recovery there by Young at third. Kind of a little bit of a bobble. Yeah. but he got a lot of rain and the grass is growing and the ball's kind of dying a little bit. Yeah. And you got to charge that. Yeah, it didn't and get out there Gavin, real quick. Yeah, did well enough on that to get the out. So one up, one down, and that will bring up Lucas Perry. He has grounded to second and grounded to first. Hand 
Swing and a miss. Fouled off 0 2. The Winnemac baseball team in action tonight. They just split a two game set with Pioneer. Mm -hmm. Winnemac trailing Twin Lakes 2 0, bottom of the fifth at Twin Lakes. Yeah, big comeback win for Winnemac uh, against Pioneer the other night. Yeah, scored five in the bottom of the sixth. Nice hitting by Perry. He goes opposite field and flares one out to left for a base hit. Perry now one for three, and that'll bring up Noah Miller. Noah drove in Pioneer's lone run with an RBI single back in the fourth. And this, this Rochester defense has converted a couple double plays this year. Coleman turns that pivot real well. Strike. I mean, if Miller hits one on the ground, he has got to get out of the box quickly. And Perry's got to good, get a good lead and try and break up that double play at second as well. Count now 0 and 2. Balls it off, stays alive. So Monday night we got a big night of uh, got a double header here in Rochester with the baseball and softball teams will be both uh, hosting Northfield. Talked about Northfield baseball being uh, ranked in the in the 1A coaches poll. Line to left, base hit. Good job by Miller there with mm -hmm. two strikes, able to get that hit. We got two on now for uh, Pioneer with just one down. So we're going to have uh, baseball, softball here versus Northfield in Rochester. And then uh, I'm heading down to Caston. A uh, big one there with the uh, Lady Comets softball team taking on West Central. You know, big, obviously, uh, just two really good teams, but uh, possible sectional matchup there as well. Yeah. And uh, I believe they're going to do their senior night on, uh, on Monday as well. Okay. So have uh, coverage from there on the web and both Rochester games on Monday. 1-0 the count to Eggers, and then he follows that one off 1-1. One one. Cast and softball has a tournament at Kokomo this weekend. The, the tournament starts, they'll play one game on Friday and two games on Saturday. Their Friday game, the game tomorrow, is against Westfield. Ooh. And then... Uh, is that at Kokomo High School or is that at the park? Co uh, Kokomo High School. The two there are two fields they run for that tournament. Okay. So you, you're more familiar with that facility than I am. I don't know if they've got. It. I don't know where the okay. second field, unless it's the the old softball field, maybe. But okay. uh, you know, it's a it's a big campus, obviously. Two and one to Eggers. Just outside, then Cast. Their first game on Saturday will be against either South Bend St. Joe or Huntington North. Oh wow. Yeah. South Bend St. Joe. Yeah. The, is the Zaki sisters? Yeah, yeah. And it hit, Eggers is hit by a pitch, and now they're loaded. They're going, where are they going? Oklahoma? Uh, I thought Alabama, but you Alabama? Might, yeah. It, it's one of the, the, the big. Yeah. First thing that came to my mind was Oklahoma, but it could be Alabama. But, yeah, they're, they're big-time softball players. One's a, one's a senior, one's a junior. Yeah. This is Jacob Guffey pinch hitting for Brandon Sterrett. I think we have a uh, runner for uh, courtesy runner there at first, it looks like, as well, getting ready to check in for Pioneer. Yeah, something uh, something cooking here for uh, for the Panthers with one out. Bases are loaded, trailing by four. Cast and baseball in action this afternoon. They are at Peru and they lead one to nothing. Bottom of the third. So that Peru team had a really impressive win over. It was Cast yesterday, but they've been shut out. 
by the Comets. Wonder who they got uh, cast going. In, cast in softball. We were just talking about them, and they lead Northfield fourteen to one. Bottom of the sixth. That's at Northfield. All right, so that one's getting close. If the yeah, Northfield actually led that game one to nothing after three innings, but Caston scored eight in the fourth and six in the sixth. Hmm. Isabel Scales has hit two home runs in that game and driven in five. So let's see how Casper can get out of this jam here. We've seen the pioneer freshman pitchers get seemingly get out of jam after jam. Now let's see if Rochester's freshman pitcher can do something like that. And the first pitch to Guffey is outside for a ball. Eli Guffey grounded a third to lead off the inning, but then two singles and a hit batter. Swing and a miss. The runner over at first is... Is that Looker? Should be. And Looker's the flex player, and yep. Eggers was the DH, so that makes a lot of sense if that's who it is. Ball two. Number four. Yep, that's Ryan Looker over at first. Strike two. Starrett was 0 for 2 while he was in there. This is a big one here. If you can get this out, puts the pressure back on Pioneer. Ball three. Weldy on deck. Big payoff pitch here. Three two count. Base on balls. A pinch hit RBI walk for Jace Jacob Guffey. And it's five to two now. Now we're bringing up Lane Weldy, but first Starrett will come in, will re-enter as a pinch runner for Jacob Guffey. Good eye by Guffey. It wasn't so much the 3-2 pitch, it was the 2-2 pitch that he took just low. Mm -hmm. Swing and a miss by Weldy. Weldy has grounded to short and popped to second. Bases loaded, one out, top six. Rochester leading 5-2. That one low and away. Grounder back to the mound, knocked down. Throw to the plate, out. That's all they'll get. Fielder's choice. One, two, and there are now two outs in the inning. Weldy's now at first. Starrett now at second. Looker now at third. Miller's out. So again, the tying run is on base, and now Brody Howard is up. And if if Casper had fielded that cleanly, he might have had a chance at a double play. Yeah, but he did a great job of not yeah. uh, panicking after he didn't feel it cleanly. Right. And, you know, getting that out at home, that's the most right. important one at that what, point. What we, you worry about sometimes the ball like, rolls off the mound or rolls off in a funky direction. Fouled off 0-2, the count to Howard. And, again, if you, if you look at this here, if Rochester can get out of this with only allowing that one run, uh, boy, that's, that's big. Got him swinging to retire the side. Strikeout number two for Casper for Pioneer in the top of the sixth. They score one run on two hits. No errors and three left. End of five and a half. Rochester leads Pioneer five to two, and you're watching RTC TV four. Back here at Bob Copeland, moving into the bottom of the sixth. 
Val, little uh, return there by the Rochester Zebras. They had done a nice job of holding uh, Pioneer, or uh, you know, Pioneer had a couple opportunities there to to do something big, and, and you know, just uh, able to uh, get that, find a way to get that out. They did walk one in, but uh, they were able to, uh, you know. Get that ground out and yeah. get the runner at home. Well, the coaches had said that Parker Casper's unfazed, and yeah. he was unfazed. I mean, it was interesting. He wound up having to get bases loaded, one out, and he had to get two freshmen out, and he did. Yeah. So freshman on freshman, we got to see that for the next, what, three more years after this year. That was softball update. Really nice win for Winnemac softball tonight. They beat West Central 5-4. to four. Did they? Yeah. That's a West Central's first loss, I yeah. believe. Yeah, yeah. Going into that game on uh, Monday over at uh, Caston for the uh, Trojans. Coleman, Pollock, and Reinhardt stew for Rochester in the bottom of the sixth against Weldy. Coleman is one for two. He has struck out. He struck out in the first, but reached in a wild pitch. Single and scored in the third, walked in the fourth. Ball low. One and one. Line to left for a base hit. Rochester has scored three runs in the bottom of the third inning over at Fansler, and they're still batting. John Glenn leads 10 to 6. Hmm. Bottom of the third. Just the bottom of the third. Wow. Yeah. Well, let's yeah, it start a half an hour later than us. Pollock up. Knocked down by Eli Guffey. Rochester with seven hits in this game. Pollock has one of them. Nice breaking ball. Sprayed to right. That is going to drop for a base hit. Coleman will try for third. He'll make it easily. First and third, nobody out. Coleman, good base running. He didn't have. He took one glance and knew that was going to drop, and he knew that was going to slice away, and knew that he could take third pretty easily. Nothing Zellers could do out there about that. So Reinert's another RBI opportunity. He is one for three. He's grounded into a force out, singled back in the third. Ground ball. Miller misses it, and it gets by him, and a run will score. We can call that one. Call that an E5. Zebra's back up by four at six to two. Yeah, it's still no outs here, so. Runners at first and second here with Cypher up to bat. Nice dig by Guffey. Cypher is 0 for 1. He has struck out. He's walked twice. He scored a run. Or actually, Lute scored the run. It's a courtesy runner for him in the fifth. Strike. Ball outside. Strike. Again, Jake is not afraid to hit with two strikes. 
he's grounder left side base hit right through the five six hole trying to score is Pollock throw will come in that was that was almost obstruction Pollock almost ran into Noah Miller but mm -hmm. no harm no foul RBI single for Cypher and it is now Yeah. Seven to two. Yeah, good piece of hitting there by Jake. Obviously, like you said, with two strikes, yeah. able to get one out there in the left field. It was the whole at bat. It was he took a he took a good curve ball because to get a better ball to hit. Mm -hmm. And he, he gave up strike two because he thought he'd get a better pitch and he hit it hard. So I think Jake will be in a better mood when we talk to him after the game. He'll <laughs> return to don't worry, IU Kokomo, you will have your catcher. Gavin Young is one four three. Nice block, but the runners are going to try to advance. Throw to third. Safe, wild throw. Reinerts gets up, and he will come in and score. Good base running. you got to be on your toes to advance on a pitch that doesn't get that far away from the catcher. And then it was a wild throw, but down the third baseline. Reinert scores, so a wild pitch and an E2. Lutz, who's the courtesy runner, stays at second. So still a runner at second. Nobody out. Three runs in in the inning. And it's now 8-2. to two. And the count is 2-0 and oh on Young. Coach Hardy make a pitching change middle of the count. Is that Eli Nickel? Seven. Cubs game postponed, you said that, but they're doing a split doubleheader. Does that mean they're playing two different teams on Saturday? On Saturday? It means um, when it's a split doubleheader, it means one game is a day game and one game is a night game. Oh. So it's not the old back in we were growing up, you'd, two games for the price of one. Back-to-back -back thing, so they actually have to have tickets to the... That doesn't happen anymore. Uh, if it's a double, like 90% of all doubleheaders are split doubleheaders. Gotcha. They cleared the stadium after the first game and... Got to got to get a new new group of paying fans in. Exactly. Hmm. So let's see. Nickel is in at pitcher. I don't think there were any other changes. Is that? Do you see Weldy out there? I do not. Mm. So Howard's still out there at shortstop. So Nickel is in, and because Nickel wasn't in the game. First pitch strike to Young. That looked like a good looking breaking ball, or maybe like a slider. Slider or curve. So again, he inherits a 2 0 count, so it's now 2 and 1. Runner at second, nobody out. Three runs already in. Oh. Foul ball. I think they got Guffy. I couldn't tell you. Yeah, was, uh, was that Guffy or the umpire? That looked like Guffy. Yeah. So from 2 0 to 2 2. Fly ball to left. Stare it. Makes the catch. Runner holds. 
Nice job by Nickel. You come in, you inherit a 2-0 count. Yeah. And he gets the he gets the batter out, and the runner does not advance. So that will bring up Colton Fervita. Fervita has walked. He flew into a double play and singled. One for two. He has driven in a run. Nice long prom weekend for the Zebras in the Northfield here on Monday. Manchester here on Wednesday and next Friday at Carroll. That gets away. Runner will advance. Lutz on a wild pitch. It's a good Carroll team. I don't know if it's quite the Carroll team they've had in previous years, but they're 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 very they're, they're very solid. I mean. Mm -hmm. They just play good baseball down there in Carroll County. And there's 2 0. Fly ball, left center. It is caught, but the run will come in and score. Zellers is now playing left. No, excuse me, Zellers is playing center. Is it McKegg is out of the game? He made the catch. But Fervita does his job with a sack fly. 9-2 to two now. Owen won the count to Brady Beck. Brady has struck out, singled, and struck out. One for three, he has scored a run. One and one. Eli Nickel, a junior. This is his second mound appearance of the year. Nine different Pioneer players have seen mound time this year, so they've Popped up at a land foul. Braden Erickson leading the team in innings pitch. That's not a surprise. Mm -hmm. What I didn't know was who was going to be their number two, their number, or at least who's going to be second on the team in innings pitch. The guy who's second on the team in innings pitch is Noah Miller at seven and a third innings. Yeah. Drew McKegg has pitched some this year. I, I'm not sure how much mound time he had had. He's pitched five innings. Eggers has pitched four and two-thirds innings. Two and two to count. Ball three. Base on balls. Brady Beck on board for the second time in this game. Brady on board. Maybe they should put that on the back of your windshield. <laughs> Brady on board? Mm, yeah, I don't think so. I'll get you one, and we'll put it on your car okay. and see how, yeah. yeah. And a picture of Brady back, like, like a little picture of him? Yeah. yeah. I'll talk to Corey. I bet he can make something up over there at the winning edge. Colton Fervita, he's real. I know I quoted him in my story. You really need to kind of hear Col Ferv say it to appreciate his his deadpan wit. Yeah. He was talking about, I asked him about his catch against Delphi. I was like, I didn't dive, I tripped. <laughs> <laughs> <He's> <laughs> so, Ferv, what did you do to get ready for this season? Lifted weights. <laughs> How did that help you? Got stronger. <laughs> There's only one for ball three in the dirt. Guffy has trouble locating it. Brady Beck will 
take the turn at second, but hold on there. Wild pitch. Come on, Brady, take two. So 3-0 and on the count to Drew Bowers. Nickel wants a new baseball. <laughs> the funny thing in high school, the ump just puts it back in his bag and he'll give it to him the next time. <laughs> the old one. Right, right. It's not like they're going to, oh, yeah, I need ten more new balls here for, uh, for the next at bat. Strike call, three and one now. Bowers is 0 for 2, but he does have an RBI. Back with it. He had a sacrifice fly back in the second inning. Line drive to left. That's a base hit. They're waving ba Brady. Back in to try and score. Throw to the plate. Is going to be offline. Bowers in at second. It's an RBI single. And he goes to second on the throw. Two RBIs for Drew Bowers. Never hesitated there on uh, sending Brady around and well, able to put that run across. Ten runs now for Rochester. Well, as 250-pound baseball players go, Brady moves better than <laughs> probably moves better than most of them. I I, I know that if we've, we've seen we've seen him you know in all, football, he's like 30 yards down downfield blocking for somebody. I mean, oh yeah, I'm not usually lead blocking for his brother. Yeah. I believe the count is 0-1. Pitches a strike throw down to third. Safe Ooh. stolen base for Bowers. Just under that tag. That was a nice throw. Knocked the base out of its peg. Boy, Pioneer was right in it. Down 5-2. to two, Bases loaded. One out in the top half of this inning. But Casper got welded to ground into a force out at the plate, and he got Howard on a strikeout. And now Rochester with five runs here, so 10 to 2, but it was, we had some drama here. Out off 0 2. Casper. Is 0 for 3. He's grounded to short. He has reached on an air and he has popped to short. Yeah, and all of a sudden, instead of, uh, you know, staying within reach, they're trying to keep this thing going because the run at the plate represents the 10 run. So, mm -hmm. 1 and 2. Ball two. Boy, that one just missed a little low. A hey, little sun peeking out here. Goes to the backstop, and Bowers will hold it third. Ball three. Coach is like, Brady just did it. Why can't you go? Rounder to short. Bobbled by Howard. But he does get his man at first. Good strong throw. Rochester scores five in the inning. Four hits. One error and one left. At the end of six innings, Rochester leads Pioneer 10 to 2, and you're watching RTC TV4. Welcome back here to Bob Copeland after six. The Zebras have opened up an eight run advantage 10 to 2 here over the Panthers, so Pioneer's got to get. Uh, Get something going here in the top of the seventh if they want to keep this thing going. 
Looked like a good opportunity for Pioneer in the top of the six, but Rochester able to hold them to just that one run. And it looks like uh, Mr. Beck is going to come in. So we yeah. started with a Beck. We're going to end with a Beck. Back to back? Back to back. There you go. Except they're not pitching back to back. Zellers, McKegg, and Guffey. Book, book in, book in, uh, book in Becks. Yeah, Caleb Lutz now playing first base. He's he's played a good deal of first base, I think, at the JV level, and I know he played some first base at Caston the other day. So he's, I think he'll be comfortable over there. Uh, I think Reinhardt might be out of the game. I think he might just take the seventh. <coughs> Young still at third. Pollock at short, Coleman at second. Casper's back in center. That looks like Drew's still in left. Mm -hmm. Who's in right? I don't think that's uh, Brand anymore, is it? No. Zellers is one for two. He struck out and doubled. Well, one thing we know doesn't change. Jake's behind the plate. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a pretty safe bet over the last four years. Softball, John Glenn leads Rochester 12 to 9, bottom of the fourth. Want to know? Brady Beck has a little bit of Rod Beck in him. He doesn't, just doesn't have the mustache yet. Hmm. A similar body type. 2 0. Rod Beck, that relief pitcher for the Cubs, had 51 saves in 1998. Hmm. As great as Sosa was that year, if it wasn't for Rod Beck, he might not have played the playoffs. Two and one. Two and two. Boy, that was a nice pitch. Is that like a little slider? Yeah. <laughs> a slider, maybe even like a change. He. Got him swinging. That was definitely a change on that last one. Hmm. So, Brant Beck started. He had two strikeouts while he was in there. Casper had two strikeouts in two innings. That's the fifth strikeout by Rochester pitching in this game. Drew McKegg was in this spot, but that is not Drew. That is 22. That is Malachi Leal. Popped up foul and out of play. Eli Guffey is due next. That is Jason Gluth in the end deck circle. One, two. Got him swinging. Jason Gluth batting for the first time. Eli Guffey was one for three while he was in there. Swing and a miss. As far as I can tell, this is Jason's first ever varsity at bat because he's a freshman. Swing and a miss. Yeah, 
Brady on board. I'm going to have to copyright that phrase. <laughs> Fouled off. Got in on the hands there. You got me thinking there. That's that. That might be a neat little design there. And I, I bet you could get some of the uh, Rochester baseball players to put those on their vehicles. That, that might be interesting. Have to do a little design work on that one. Oh and two. Breaking ball outside. Hi. I'm thinking that's fur back in right field. With Casper in center, Bowers in left. Two and two. Inside. Full count. Lucas Perry on deck, opening for a shot. Good patience by Gluth after falling to 0 and 2 is battled back to full count. Ground ball to first. Lutz has it. He will win the race to the bag. A 1 2 3 inning for Brady Beck. Seals the deal as the Zebras win it over Pioneer 10 to 2. I know much closer than the final score indicated is kind of something you s maybe more say in baseball or, or be more you s something more say in like football or basketball, but I think this was closer than the final score indicated. Yeah, yeah, up until the uh, sixth inning when Rochester put up those five. I mean, it was three, four runs most of the way through, and, and both teams did a, a nice job of uh, limiting the other team's opportunities when it looked like there was – a chance to break it open, and, and nobody was ever really to break able to break it open until the sixth inning when the, the Zebras finally got those five runs across. So we'll take a break here while Val uh, gets his uh, stats totaled up and come Fur back furiously. Come back and wrap it up here. The final score: Zebras win 10-2 over Pioneer here at Bob Copeland Field. Be back here in just a moment. Yeah. 